Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Would you sleep with sick women? I may be pregnant, but I'm still a man. Spank the unruly ones. It's indecent, it's vulgar, it's blasphemous. You're gonna ride you till you can't stand up. Come on, come on, let's go down. All right, all right, keep your shirt on. Love Line's meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Here's Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. True. Let's just get started with the show tonight. I know it's become quite uh, cathartic for you on a Sunday night, but uh, can we just begin the show? Is this just the beginning? Well, we have no guests, so yeah. our uh, our guess is the out-of-context Drew Drops, or the uh, OCDDs. Are, are you serious? Uh, <laughs> I, I thought some of you and Mike maybe had just plotted no, about. No, 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 no. We don't like each other enough to plot. Okay. Uh, that would take context. Although I did see you guys speaking in a social engagement on Friday. Yeah. And he hates it when I introduce him to everyone as Engineer Mike. He was bumming cigarettes off. <laughs> we were at uh, producer Ann's uh, lovely oh, uh, 25th uh, birthday, Ann? Uh, what was it? Yes. 22nd, My I think it was. 22nd? Fifth annual 25th. <laughs> the fifth annual uh, producer Ann 25th uh, blowout bash, which uh, turned out uh, to be quite a shindig. Very nice. Uh, Drew was there with his uh, lovely wife and uh, Dr. Marcel. Showed up with his new um, fiance, latest fiance. Uh, fiance. Oh, that's what he's calling her. And uh, had a good time with uh, with all the aforementioned folks. Uh, the party was so good that actually uh, the place that uh, Anne and her, her, um, her wonderful husband Doug had booked out, uh, by the time that was over, we actually moved to another place and um, kept it going all night. So uh, it was quite a turnout. And... Uh, uh, I, I, and I would be sincerely flattered by that turnout. Lots of uh, big wig uh, record folks there, uh, radio guys, and uh, all, all hanging out, all there for the long haul. Yeah, I was, I was very pleased. I had a great time, and it was fun. And we got her uh, something made of clay that was lovely. <laughs> uh, uh, the, you came to the party, man, with this one. The you pressure, guys got me awesome gift. The pressure was on because uh, I'm not much of a present giver, and uh, Anne uh, is a good present giver, and... Uh, so Anne started putting the screws to me uh, like on Sunday. Hey, she, you better. She, she's a good giver and a relentless receiver. You, you better, uh, you better come through. And uh, Drew and I were together working on something else on Friday uh, out in uh, Old Town, Pasadena, and we hit the town and uh, we said we got to buy a gift for Anne. And uh, Drew looked at me and he said, uh, "I know, we'll get her some clothes." <laughs> and I said, "Are you effing nuts? You think she's going to wear something that you and I uh, agree on?" And then he said, uh, well, well, we'll get my wife to get her some clothes. I, uh, screw that. We're going into the pottery barn and we're scoring. <laughs> so we got her. Uh, and you guys did. They're Crate beautiful. And Crate and yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Adam, Adam knows a thing or two about ceramics. I'll mm-hmm. give him that. Absolutely. And it was very funny. We got sort of spotted by some people and Adam goes, oh, it's our shopping day. <laughs> I led these uh, young fans uh, who we posed for a picture with to believe that every Friday, uh, Drew and I went out and shopped for pottery together. I think they bought it, too. All right, the uh, fantasy of radio and television. All right, let's talk about a couple of things before we get started tonight. Uh, the guest is the love uh, we have between the two of us. We have? Yes. Uh, later on uh, in the week, uh, Alexandra Paul will be here from uh, Baywatch to um, uh, do battle with us. Uh, she was the one uh, we had the big brouhaha uh, over. No, please do not. That's a royal we. Do not include me in that. Yes, I'm including you well, in She's that. my friend. Yeah. All right. You're right on board. I'll play the tapes if I have to. Anyway, she didn't show up a few months ago. There were some troubles. She's here to clear uh, the record. Uh, that would be on uh, Tuesday. Then uh, Jacinda Barrett will be in here from... Uh, uh, um, uh, what the uh, real, ro- world. real world? Yes, I was trying to think of which real world, but uh, she's very beautiful. Just made it on the uh, 50 most beautiful uh, people thing, oh. and uh, has got some movies coming out. We'll talk to her, and then uh, Patrick Dempsey, who's uh, oh, he was just in that 20,000 Leagues thing, and he's been in a whole bunch of movies. Uh, I'll give you the titles when he shows up. He's a real nice guy. Turns out lives down the street from me, so uh, he'll be in on Thursday. All right, uh, Drew, what did you do today? I uh, spent the day with my children in a amusement park. All right. I was at the Gay Pride Parade. No kidding. Yes, indeed. On a float. No. Yes. Yes. As one of the village people. Yes. Uh, high five. Uh, and I want to show you something because I... Uh, look at my back. I, I, it's, it's sunburned. Is it burned? Oh. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's... Yeah. It's like a second degree burn. Yeah, is that second degree? Some places, yeah. You see that, everybody? You can see the bra strap going right over the top there. Oh, I am in immense pain. 
Let me tell you, I, I think um, I, I think God was uh, intensifying the sunlight because he, he, he didn't want me on that float or something. Uh, explain. I was uh, the morning show here at K Rock. Uh, we all did the uh, we all did the gay pride parade uh, this year. We're on a float as the Why village you people. Us for this, we went about there to take pictures. I was uh, the construction worker, <laughs> and uh, I was sporting. Oh, wait, no, uh, seriously, why didn't you prepare us for this? What, 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 Ann and I would have been down there. No, please, please, you had Ann, to go to the amusement yeah, park Ann, with uh, the kids. Please. I would have no. paid to yeah, be please. there we to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And believe me, we uh, scheduled yeah, this if right you would have brought your kids to this thing, it would have been at least six years therapy before they're ever right again. This was actually televised today. Oh, it I, was? I could have seen you on TV. Um, uh, who, who televised the uh, gay I parade? I what channel it was, but it was awesome. All right. Well, I was uh, I was there uh, in amongst the uh, debauchery that was going on, and uh, I was sporting the uh, the construction boots, the uh, cut off denim short shorts, the uh, A shirt or the uh, T T top, uh, not the T top, the tank top. Right. Uh, as you see, the burn, the uh, construction belt. I had a mustache going. Why didn't you wear a sunscreen? It's bizarre. I didn't think of it, right. but as I was standing up on the float at the mouth of the parade route, uh, looking at all the other guys, and there's a lot of sunscreen going around there because there uh, ain't a lot of clothing going on. Apparently, uh, gay men cannot afford T-shirts. Uh, there was n I never saw more nipples in my life. It was, uh, and uh, and you never felt it. You really wish you'd tanned and worked out, is what I'm saying, because they're, they're just guys, just built guys, shaved, uh, stripped, uh, ripped, and built, tanned dudes for as far as the eye can see. And I thought to myself, and there's many a lesbian there uh, as well, and I thought, uh, here's the tragic irony. Uh, the gay pride parade is basically a bunch of guys out celebrating their masculinity. Which is fine. I mean, you've never seen more uh, tanned asses in your life, Drew. But oh, you've probably seen enough. But but it's also uh, women out celebrating their masculinity, right. which means as a heterosexual guy, uh, you're getting it both ways. Right. And it would be fine. I mean, think about this, guys, for just one moment. If there was a female equivalent to this gay pride parade, I mean, these are incredible physical specimens of male wearing nothing. I mean, a uh, pair of jockey shorts, maybe. A lot of guys in their underwear, a lot of guys sporting the chaps, uh, guys that basically, when they're not at the uh, skin salon, they're at the gym, these guys. Right. If there was a parade uh, of just incredibly gorgeous, built, uh, tanned, uh, muscular women wearing nothing but uh, thong-back bikinis, uh, imagine what a triumph this would be for the heterosexual community. And I came to a conclusion why all gay guys have such great physiques. Why? Well, they got no kids. They got no wife. They just go to the gym. They get off work. They go to the gym. They don't have the overhead. Right. Drew, you, you don't have, you can't go to the gym every day. That's right. You would work out. Right. But you got to hustle home. You got the triplets. You yeah. got the wife. There's no way yeah. you're skating off to the gym for an hour and a half right. every day. No way. But let's just say you lived alone. And it was just uh, your life partner uh, squeegeeing off the Lucite uh, shower door or something. Uh, you'd have no problem getting away to the gym. As a matter of fact, he would insist that you go to the gym. It's interesting. This is my theory. It's also but interesting what we talked about. The difference, we, we had a discussion on Friday about the difference between men and women and their relationships and uh, their expectations from relationships. And we were talking about how gay men and gay women relate quite differently. Yes. In terms of the, the, the focus on the sexuality seems to be more predominant with gay male. Uh, yes. It's no coincidence there's two guys in a relationship. The, the worst possible situation that way. Drew, you would have uh, seen some things that uh, it, you would have, um, e even in all your years in this business and as a doctor, uh, would have put hair on your nipples. But you don't see, you don't see gay women doing that, do you? Or no. They? No. This is, like I said, the tragedy of the Gay Pride Parade. Uh, is uh, naked uh, male flesh uh, rubbing paba on each other's rear ends as uh, far as the eye can see. And then a couple of uh, heavy set women with short cropped hair and ponchos uh, chain no, smoking. But I'm no, come serious. On. Come on. I didn't see anything. I, I swear to God. Not, not a boob to be found. All right.
So, uh, uh, well, come on, lesbians, uh, take a uh, uh, t- take a, a trick out of the gay uh, guy's yeah, book it, it, and start it, stop butching it up and uh, no, wait, get out I the mean, lipstick. They have that, right? They there, they weren't that. there. I, I didn't but, see them. But that, it just shows the difference between what women focus on in relationships. Right, well, They're focused on the relationship, not on their expressing their all right. But if, if physical a, needs. if a gay man is uh, knee deep in his masculinity, please, uh, gay women, uh, get knee deep in your femininity. Which would not be expressed that would the be same huge. way. Which would uh, not be expressed the same way. Listen, we're not living Especially in a perfect not, world. Unless they wanted to get control over men, and then they become strippers. All right. Well, I, I got to find another. I got to find the strippers parade then. Uh, Cynthia, 17. Hello. Hey. Hi. Um, I love your show. I listen to it every night. But I have a big problem. All right. Okay. Ever since I was 14 years old, I've been going out with this guy named Chris. And I'm now 17, and we've been going out for a while, but for the past year, it's been kind of rocky, and there's just, like, been a lot of problems going on. Um, earlier in the year, um, he he would get mad when I would talk to other people, like other guys or something like that. He'd get mad and, like, think that I was cheating on him or whatever. And then I tried to tell him that I wasn't, and then not too long ago, I just started to get to know his older brother. I think his brother's like one or two years older than he is. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. What? Yeah. Well, go uh, ahead. And um, we were over at I was over at Chris's house, and I guess Chris is, Chris had rented like a porno or something like that, and then so we just like watched it, and his brother came home like halfway through it, and then so he finished watching it with us, and then Chris had left the house to go get something down the street from his aunt's house and then so it was only me and his older brother Uh Mm -hmm. and his older brother had started coming on to me but I didn't stop him Mm. but I didn't have sex with him but I practically I wonder if this girl was set up yeah, it, it really yeah. sounds uh, curious yeah. that he would uh, yeah. rent oh. a gay. Uh, sorry, I'm on the gay thing. Uh, rent a porn movie. Um, well, no, view it, it was w- only me and Chris watching it. He right, but the brother comes home. home and basically uh, fires you up uh, like a uh, four-stroke or two-stroke engine, gets you revving, and then heads out to the aunt's house and leaves you alone uh, with his brother to finish watching the porn movie. Right. Yeah, but the way Chris was, he he didn't want me talking to anybody, and he knew right, if I right. ever met his brother that I would probably go for his brother because... All right, look, uh, the bottom line is the relationship... What'd you do with his brother? I practically did everything but have sex with him. All right, that's even worse. And, but I want to know if I should tell... Hang on. I was just telling a friend of mine uh, this at the Gay Pride Parade uh, today that uh, I would rather my uh, girlfriend or wife or whoever uh, have sex with a guy than just uh, have, like, oral sex uh, with a guy. Because uh, because the sex meant, okay, she's revved up, it, it's uh, she's horny, uh, she needs some love, and she found it in the arms of another man. The uh, Just uh, giving the guy a, a BJ on the sofa is almost uh, an F.U., Mm -hmm. Uh, You you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then after Uh, that, um, well, I want to know if I should tell him. And I, he, look, I, well, I, you want out of the relationship, yeah, you so you might as well out. tell him. No, 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 no. Why, yeah, why put him, why put, look, what, why put him through that pain and why destroy that relationship with the bro- between the brothers? If indeed this wasn't something set up, which is already just more bizarre than uh, I can even comment upon. Uh, let's assume it wasn't, and let's just go on the fact that this relationship is in trouble. It needs to end. You've been together since you're 14. There's, it's sort of a first love. Those are so hard to give up. Terminate the relationship. You don't have to give any reasons why. Get away from this family and go find another relationship. You really, it really, the fact that you would be with his brother just speaks loudly about how much you wish to get out of this relationship and how aggressive you could be about it. Well, she likes the brother now. Is the problem? Well, now his brother said if I ever broke up with him, that he would want to go out with me. Well, that's too bad. All right, well, get away from that. Wait a family. minute. This get away is, from that oh, hey, but come on. This is her plan. She wants to go out with the guy, and it's the brother's plan no, too. It's, it's a time out. Really, time out. Honestly, uh, right. she, she need, has never needed a timeout so badly as right now from all this, and when she can get some, a little bit of distance from it and f- listen to her feelings, then right. figure out what she's she not going to listen to you, Drew. Here's what's going to happen. Uh, I agree with Drew. Uh, do not tell the guy why you're breaking up. Just break up. And it, this is a self-fulfilling prophecy anyway. He's been pushing uh, this, uh, you know, don't talk to my brother. Uh, I don't want to leave you alone with my brother. Uh, uh, here's Taboo 2, uh, the tub of uh, lube and a six-pack. I'm going to the aunt's house. I'll be back whenever. 
I mean, you, you know what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah, 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 yeah. but be, be that as it may. All right. Uh, yeah. Break up with the guy, and I'm sure she'll start up with the brother, and see if you can yeah. keep it under wraps. Three months moratorium. See if you can keep it under wraps for that three months, uh, because that is the, the time when he's most likely to snap. They, there's no way. I mean, she's going with the brother. I know it. Yeah. All right. Don't try to talk her out of it. Uh, Lee, 16. 14. No, all right. No, it says 16. Um, yeah, um, my brother is right here or on the next floor, but I'm having a problem with him. Who's on the next floor? My brother. Oh, okay. And I have a problem. What's the problem? He, okay, he tells me that he doesn't do drugs, but I know he does. What does he do? Um, I'm not sure. I think he just smokes weed or something. How do you find that out? My friends, brothers, and some of his friends and my friends have does, all seen him. Does he smoke pot regularly, you think? I'm not sure. Maybe, like, twice a month. Is there any alcoholism in your family? No. How old is he? 16. Mm-hmm. Well, in what context has he been telling you, uh, I don't do any drugs? Was it in front of your parents, or...? No, I, I would just ask him because I'm concerned. Well, uh, keep at him. I mean, you can't be responsible for him. Uh, it, uh. It'd be, if he were to smoke pot a couple times a month, it doesn't mean he's an addict. Provided there's not alcoholism in your family, he really wouldn't be at risk for that. Oh. And it's a, it's a drug that if it's the only drug he's doing, I mean, it isn't any worse than drinking uh, here and there. I, I wouldn't certainly say that you should accept it. Okay. Well, well what's she, she going to do? Well, she doesn't have to accept it. I think, I think uh, again, I think the more that she is able to make it clear that it hurts her to see him putting himself in harm's way, the better it is for him. On the other hand, the reality is, Lee, is that he's probably going to be okay. Okay? Yeah, I was just wondering if I should, like, tell my mom or um, like, anybody at all, even. Yeah. I'm going with no. Well, if there's a way you can do it... Uh, way you can op think about. Because uh, I'm like concerned. Yeah, I, I understand that. Think of a way you could open their eyes, perhaps without you being implicated as the source of the information. You see what I'm like, saying? What do you mean? I don't know. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. If you find some paraphernalia around, I don't know. So, I don't know. But, and what uh, Drew's saying is somehow is there a way to uh, alert your parents or whoever uh, to the fact that this guy's smoking grass uh, without you actually doing the alerting or him knowing that it was you that did the alerting. And that's a pretty tall order. But that would be, from my, I, I know Adam would disagree strongly, but from my perspective, certainly that would be the best thing. It gives your parents an opportunity to do the parenting, and not yeah. you. Because I was thinking if I told him, then he knows stuff that I could get in trouble for. All right. Uh, hey, believe me, he'll, <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll relinquish it. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, believe me, that is uh, locked and loaded, and, it, all he, and, he, and he has an itchy trigger finger. Uh, I, I, I miss those days. Uh, it, it's it's a mutually assured uh, annihilation. It's, it's really what we had with the Soviet Union uh, just a few years ago, which is, uh, listen, uh, we could destroy you 10 times over. You could destroy us 15 times over. And that's why uh, th not a missile will be launched because of the fact that we both will destroy each other. I had that deal going with my sister, too. Uh, you, you get the goods early on on them. Uh, something uh, gets to them on you, and uh, then everyone's got to be quiet. <laughs> but it's always the best uh, when uh, uh, mom or dad confronts you on something. I, I don't know. Are your kids doing this? Uh Oh, yeah. Just yet? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, uh, there was a roach clip in Adam's, uh, Adam's bathroom. Uh, 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 Lauren, uh, Lauren uh, uh, took a swig of gin out of the, out of the uh, liquor yes. cabinet. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, Adam peed in the sink. I oh, saw him. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's see. Now, I'm, now i got to start making stuff up. <laughs> She's a junkie. And, and your sister didn't. Uh, no, she wasn't making stuff up. Jessica, 16. Hi, Adam. Hi, Dr. Drew. Jessica. Hi, um, Hi. I had a question for Adam. All right. Okay, um, it's been a goal of mine for the longest time to try and get into radio. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to know why you always make it sound like it's the worst career choice. No, it's the greatest. Really? It's really um, the only place um, idiots can make a living. <laughs> See, if no. you be truthful, Drew, you know I'm right. As subpar intelligence people with the mediocre uh, talent can really make a comfortable living in radio. Okay. And uh, here's the other beauty of radio. Uh, 
the management of radio is so stupid that even if you suck on one station, uh, it's more important that you were on that station, not how badly you sucked on it. And if you get fired from that gig, uh, another competitive station will gobble you up uh, immediately. It's like, hey, this guy uh, sucked on our competitor station for five years. Now he's freed up. We'll get him on our station. He can, he can suck on our station for a while. No, we'll kick, we'll kick their butt. Right if there. you want to get into radio, uh, here's what you do. Uh, go down to whatever local station is nearest, uh, apply for an internship or, or drive a van or something. Uh, if you have uh, two brain cells to rub together uh, within, uh, by your 21st birthday, you'll probably be program director Adam? at the place. Yes. Um, well, I think you've come down to this station before in um, Tucson, Arizona, KSA. Sure. Yes. And That's, I applied for an internship. It's, and it's lovely there. They have a beautiful uh, dirt road that leads right to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's just that they wanted me to have broadcasting experience or uh, an wait, educational background. Uh, right. In no, please. Right, here's the deal. Jessica, here's um, the deal. It, it, get, get as thorough and as complete and as intense an education as you possibly can. And okay. at the end of all that, if you're still interested in radio, go down and start working at a radio station. But, but do not, See if you do can not, uh, pick up a methadone uh, addiction along the way, too. That not, usually helps. Do not focus your education upon broadcasting. Uh, neither of us had, I would dare say, any broadcasting training. Is that accurate? Uh, absolutely not. Zero. So uh, do you recommend like a liberal arts education? Yes, I strong, strongly uh, uh, urge that. That's my... my and Adam? Yeah. Um, what would you like if you had a chance to start earlier in radio? Because uh, you got a late start, didn't you? Yeah. Um, well, uh, it, it, it tells. It shows. It. Well, I got started in radio when I was uh, just turning thirty. So uh, yeah, late start for you. Mm -hmm. What's your question? Well, I mean, if you had a chance to start earlier, what would you do? I mean, if you were my age and I would, know. I would go down to the local station and uh, make myself available. I, 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 I would try have. to a phone operator, intern, a van driver, whatever it is, they, you can parlay it into producer, the morning show, a producer, the night show, a GM, a, whatever it is, sales. That's all you just be there. Uh, don't get hooked on drugs. Um, um, try not to get caught uh, stealing anything, and uh, you'll be fine. Well, if you ever need an intern or if you start a radio station at Boobville, please. <laughs> all right, Jessica. Be there. You'll be fine. Okay, thanks. All Thank right. You. Bye. All right. Uh, if I can help a uh, young uh, prospect uh, along the way, uh, I'll be more than happy to do it. You know me, Drew. I wish uh, someone had helped me along the way. All right. Uh, Drew? Yeah. Sell the hell out of the next call. Nope. Haven't picked it yet. Okay. Hey Why don't you try rapping at this time? Yo, yo, kick some cyber and stop it. Love and line. I'll be right back in a minute. I'm sorry. That was really bad. You're just not straight like me. WEBN. Man turns animal for the erotic pleasures of women. It's love line. All right. <laughs> WEBN. This is Polly Shore, and right now you're listening to The Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, you is, and uh, we are. And, uh, boy, what? Oh, we got a lot of, uh, what are all these faxes here we, for? We always get, I, I took them. I oh, you did? Yeah. All right. Uh, we will get to some of these uh, as we go along. Uh, the show's love line. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. And it's back to the phones we go. Tim, 29. Hi, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. Excuse me, I'm a little nervous. That's um, all right. I have a kind of a, well, you might not consider it a problem, but I kind of do, um, about masturbation. I do it almost on a daily basis, and I'm married and have a beautiful, beautiful wife, and I'm to the point now where I start uh, getting, hate myself, where I start feeling guilty. Uh, almost and, on a daily basis? Yeah, on a daily basis. I might skip a day here and there. Uh, what are you and good for? What that? What can I put you down for? How do you mean? How many, how many times a day? I don't know what you mean by that either. I mean, how many times a day or how many times oh, a week? Oh, no, no once that, a day. I might skip a day here and there, but it's pretty uh, much... All right, but uh, weekly, what can I put you down for? Uh, five to six times a week. So, all right, six. And, you know, I, and the thing is, on top of that, is it's sort of like a rush for me to do it, and I have to use porn, and I start hating myself, so I throw it all out, and the next couple weeks later, I find myself getting more porn. How, how uh -huh. long have you been married? 
What's that? How long have you been married? Um, three years. Uh-huh. And this has been before since I've been ma- before I was even married. To what uh, what religion uh, were you? Um, just Protestant. Uh-huh. That's your theory. That has never. Been, I've heard you ask that question before, and I realized just now where you were going with that. What? You believe it's it's a compensation for guilt? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying uh, people who masturbate and feel guilty about it uh, are usually the people who have been told that it was bad at some point and now are going against oh, what they uh, learned. They're acting out against that. It. It's never been no, that. No, this, sound, this sounds more like a real a true compulsion. Yeah, it compulsion. is. And it's like I, 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 I fight myself so hard not to do it. And, and this and is, I, have you ever had any other consequences from your sexual behaviors? Um, no. Any any screwed up relationships, any financial expense? Something stuck in your ass? <laughs> medical well, problems? I mean, I've had some kind of crummy girlfriend relationships in the past, and I'm, yeah, I'm going to have a well, little... Well, here's, yeah. what I, here's what we're concerned about. Uh, certainly by Loveline standards, six times a week is a little below the, the curve. But it can be more sometimes. Somehow they'll do it two or three times a day. Uh, and I, I've tried to think... Uh, right, let, let, let's let's just try and get, get at the truth here, Tim. Okay. What are you good for a week? For my wife or for me? <laughs> I can go on and on and on with it. You know, I... I, I, right. I try right. to right. it. Were, were you abused when you were a child? Um, when I was maybe four or five... Um, I was a little bit, and I don't know. I may have been more, but I don't remember. Okay, that that, that is certainly a way to become uh, sort of overly active in this way. Now, another another sort of way of looking at this is from the standpoint of an addiction. Is yeah, there I al- think it is addiction. Is there alcoholism in your family? No. Okay. No drugs. I never take drugs. I've not drink. you. Not you. In, in your family. No. No drugs in my family either. Alcohol. No. What's your ethnic background? Um, white. Be more specific. Caucasian. Oh, Christ. Um, you know. Oh, Caucasian. Oh, hold on, Drew. Uh, we were way off the mark there. Uh, hey, let, you try that one with... Uh, try the same question with me, Drew. Uh, I'll give you the proper uh, love line your, response. Your, your ethnic background. Uh, uh-huh. 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 Please, let me answer, Drew. Go ahead. What's your ethnic background? Uh-huh. Uh, your ethnic background. My ethnic background? Huh? Oh, yes, your ethnic background. White. Uh-huh. No, I'd be a little more specific. Uh, Caucasian? Is that enough? You want more? I want more. Um, uh, honky? <laughs> uh, I, d- I don't know what the question is. Uh, my ethnic background? Yeah, what is your ethnic background? Cracker? <laughs> I, I, uh, huh? Uh, I, I'm confused. Okay. Oh, for Christ's sake! The, hell, the guy's 29. He can't tell you where his parents are from. Holy shit. I am. Tim. Yeah. Tim, where are your folks from? From California. Oh, see, I knew. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they are they're mixed breeds. They're mixed up like me. I'm a stew. I knew that. I'm high yes, yes. yes. You're officially the dumbest <laughs> person over 25 we've spoken to here on Loveline. Oh, come on. Now, where's your mom? What? Uh, uh, he's, um, uh, I, I, we've run out of words uh, now. It's like, uh, it's, it, it's like telling a blind person. Um, it's, it's the color red. And they go, uh, what's red? And you go, uh, 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 it's, 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 it's. <laughs> Where do you go from California? Uh, uh, His ancestors, we'll what country did they, were they originated from? Uh, when there's a big international soccer match, uh, what team do your folks root for? They don't pay attention. All They're right. a full blood Americans just like I am, Brady Bunch family. All right, so no they, uh, uh, big uh, buckles on the shoes, uh, came <laughs> over. Uh, oh, Kill a turkey. What, where did they come from? Uh, was there a what, sur- what, what country would they hearken from? Well, my aunt, you're, 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 Ireland, my mom, Germany. Okay. That tells me a lot, okay? okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, well, so that... that of, I, hey, I said that a few minutes ago. German, German English, and Irish. I oh, you, you did. Back, you Adam, were, Adam had you on hold a while back. Okay, All right. I'm sorry. Listen, uh, Tim. Yeah. That would make you um, German, uh, English, and Irish, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. Breed. That's your ethnic. And, and Irish particularly have a high predisposition for alcoholism, and certain parts of uh, German ethnic heritage certainly do as well. Well, the Germans are famous uh, masturbators. <laughs> not masturbating, addiction, oh, alcoholism. Oh, okay. say. And so usually uh, I'm looking for true uh, sexual addiction if there's a history of alcoholism. So that may be uh, a way of looking at this. And in, in any case, uh, 12-step programs for sexual compulsions, even if you're not a biologically prone addict, can be quite helpful. If indeed this is something related to your sexual abuse in childhood, um, you need you need to get individual help for this. Uh, and and in, 
in either case, the safest thing to do is go see a psychiatrist or psychologist and get this sorted out. All right, five six times a week is not a problem making in my in my hamper, but um, you know, to each his own. And if it feels like a problem, then I guess it is. And if you beat yourself up about it, it is. So here's what to do: uh, call uh, what SA, is it? SA or AA. You can get a referral to SA, and then if not, uh, an individual certainly ask your doctor for an individual therapist. Colin, sixteen. Yeah, that's me. Um, I got a problem. It's uh, with me and my dad. And uh, he like he treats me treats me and my brothers and sisters and my mom like you know like we're a liability mm -hmm. in our family. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he's like I don't know like like he he treats me like like, like he he thinks that I should be the kid that he was and like we're two totally different people mm -hmm. and, and we're always at each other you know we're always at each other's throat. What, what, what was what was the kid tonight. that he was? Huh? Describe what that is. What do you mean? The kid that he was. Gay, uh, artsy type? He, um, I'm just guessing. He he moved around a lot because his father was in the military. Right. Um, he he got, like, he was he's real smart. Really, uh, uh, he, he's, uh, he got straight A's when he was a kid. Yeah. Um, I don't get straight A's. I get C's and B's, you know? Okay, grades. And, and he always, you know, like, compares me to him mm -hmm. and like, says things, you know, if, if, if you're lucky... Uh, I'm not my father because otherwise you'd be, you know, missing a few teeth right now, things like that. Mm, so he, so Colin, he was abused when he was a child. No, I don't think he was abused. No, Colin. Hmm. If, if anyone believes their father is going to strike them to the point that their teeth oh. would be knocked out, oh, well, maybe he's talking about dental hygiene. I don't, I don't think that he would never, he would never knock me. But his father did that to him, or at least made him feel that he was in that position, uh, that he was in that degree of threat. Well, he said it, uh, and he my, said it as though that's the way his father actually behaved. Yeah. And so your father was abused when he was younger. Okay. And and the stuff goes generation to generation. He may be just, con he may be containing himself with everything he has, yeah. not to do the things his dad did to him. It, it's the unfortunate it, thing about abusive parents that then these kids go out and abuse other people. Well, the guy was in the military and all that, so... Yeah. Well, just moving around can be abusive for kids. And, 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 you know, he, like... And, like, the reason we're always arguing is because, you know, he he loves, like, to change the rules on me or something. You know, he'll... he'll yeah. and, like, like, the deal was, like, if I got a 2.5 grade average, yeah. I could get my license. Well, when I got my 2.5, he's like, oh, no, I never said that it was a 3.0. Then when I got a 3.0, he said, no, 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 you got to have better grades. Yeah, that, that, that inconsistency is very destructive it, to you. And, and, Not and, fair. I and, like, I, I never get any recognition for anything. Like, right. like they have, to, we ha I have. But he know. never did either. And that that's what you're, unfortunately, you know, it takes it takes 100 years to rinse out, a, you know, to sort of cleanse a, a family system of an abusive parent. Yeah. It takes several generations uh, for it's this really, very reason. It's, it's like an oil spill in, uh, in uh, the Alaskan Sound or right, something. Right. Uh, there's a couple of guys with trawlers ain't going to clean it up in a weekend. The it takes uh, years adjust, uh, yeah. for it to get out of the system. And and he never he never recognizes me for anything I do. Colin, like, you, I you need to... Kid, like, whenever they go want to run errands or go out at night or something, they go they, they go do things like four times a week. Hmm. And they always say, hey, we need you to watch kids for a few hours. And I every time I say... I say, okay, yeah, that's no problem. And and when I come home, never, you know, I don't expect to get paid because that's just, you know, I should do that for my parents. And but like, never thank you for, never thank you for uh, taking care of the kids. I never uh, brought my my world history grade up from a C to an A, and he never said anything about it. No recognition. All right, no. Uh, where is he? I want to talk to him. He's in bed. All right, uh, uh, throw a glass of cold water on him and get him on the phone. Uh, Colin, no. I mean, here's the deal. Colin's going to have his day. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I was the same way, except for I didn't bring anything up and no one asked me to do anything. But uh, other than that, it was the same. Uh, my parents didn't know I existed. They were too screwed up in their own uh, neuroses when I was growing up. Yeah. And uh, you just have to sort of uh, become uh, old and sane uh, as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. Your parents love you, but they have real difficulty showing it. And, uh, well, my mom, my mom and I, we get along great. You see, my mom, she always tells me, like, like I, like I have a permit, and I would say, "Hey, mom, why don't you let me drive?" But you see, my dad won't change his insurance because well, he doesn't. Insure Colin, the, the, the having a decent mother is going to be your salvation, and you sound like a great guy, and you're going through a very tough relationship with dad, and uh, dad can't help himself as much as I wish he could, unless you can find some way to bring some consequences to bear on him. Uh, you know, like uh, enlist mom's help to uh, really bring some reality to bear, or if he ever threatens to strike you, call Child Protective Services. I mean, the things you can do to yeah. empower yourself. Yeah, he's not going to talk uh, 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 this guy uh, out of his... Yeah. Uh, right, that's right. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, get those grades up, go to college, and get out of there. Right. And um, uh, go gay. So that'll get him. Oh, yes.
You know I'm right, Drew. All right, uh, Drew, why don't you sell the hell out of uh, this next call? Wait, I'll speak to her. Uh, Heather. Yes. 21. Yes. Uh, you're, you have problems uh, masturbating. Could it be because you were molested when you were younger? Yes. Okay. That's okay. very provocative. Hold on. Okay. And right, we'll get to you right after the break. It's Love Line. WBBN. Uh, listen. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, uh, that was me speaking to the sneaker pimps uh, off the air during a heated battle here on Love Line. Uh, number 1 800 L O V E 191, fax number 310 854 4455. I'm Adam Carroll, that is uh, Dr. Drew. The show is uh, Love Line, and uh, fax is like this from uh, Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> Dear, uh, oh, well, I don't know who this is. Uh, who do we have? Uh, uh, dear Steve, Adam, and Drew. Who's on? Uh, Steve uh, from, uh, who do we have on, Ed? Last week or something? Oh, well, anyway. oh well, that's, uh, <laughs> here's a timely fax. Anyway, uh, you guys need, need to enforce some morals, uh, values, and ethics. Uh, when children are getting pregnant, uh, they need to give the baby up for adoption, not have abortions. You'll never see people protesting adoption. Well, Drew is a huge uh, proponent of uh, adoption. Are you not, Drew? I, I be. You are uh, you are the uh, spokesperson for adoption. I would be. Try and use common sense in giving out advice instead of betting. Hmm. I bet this person was molested when they were younger. Mm -hmm. You want to you gamble? You want to gamble on that? Uh, it would also be helpful if you gave out your number more often. Well, I think I do quite a bit. Anyway, uh, kids having sex is stupid and wrong. Too many people use sex and love and... Uh, use uh, sex as love and end up having uh, many partners uh, in useless sex. Uh, we need to act more human, not like animals. This kind of uh, brings up what we were talking about together on Friday, about how men's view of the relationship is so different than women's. I mean, we, kinda, we talked for a while, we finally realized that uh, very often with women, the, the instinct, the sort of the culmination of a relationship is, is geared towards childbearing, childbearing. I mean, that's sort of where the relationship is going. The fantasies are in that direction. Marriage is sort of part of it. And for guys, where's it going? Uh, it's going to the bed. And so what? why? Why? Yeah. So uh, the guy can get laid? And then? Uh, then he can call his buddies and tell them he got laid, and then they can watch sports. And then? And then he can die of prostate cancer. No, then he, what? he can go out with somebody else. Oh, then he can go out with someone else, so he can, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, a lot of this is based on the phone call, because um, once you've had sex with a girl uh, more than, like, five times, uh, your buddies aren't interested. <laughs> you know, and I mean, you can't call your buddies. Uh, you've been with uh, your uh, lovely wife for some years now. You can't call one of your buddies from, like, high school. God, hey, I guess you just cut himself a slice. <laughs> yeah, I just nailed my wife for the uh, 1800th time. Uh, big deal. I've been banging my wife over 3,000 times. See, they don't want to hear it. But you go out and get a fresh piece, uh, then you can make the phone call. Well, it's and not that's... Uh, it's not so much about it, but that, that's yeah. sort of the way men are hardwired. And really what, what uh, relationships seem to be about is sublimating that. And if we have a society which supports women's instincts in relationships, which are more stable towards long-term relationships and that family and stuff, uh, it could be a salvation. Really? Right. Uh, so, women, uh, you are the um, uh, the uh, moral bouncers of the uh, relationship concert. It's not moral. It's just uh, it's just the bouncers. They're just, they're yeah, just, they're just the crowd control. Yeah, right. Yeah. You need to step up to the plate and uh, stop us uh, before we hump I mean, again. I mean, this this is more in lines what we were talking about earlier about the about what if you take all women and put them in relationships? You don't get a gay pride parade like the ones you do when you put all men in relationships. No, uh, you get a golf tournament. <laughs> hey, Drew's laughing, everyone. <laughs> Heather, 21. 
Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right. You know right. my problem? Right. You, uh, you're having trouble um, masturbating. Not trouble. I've never done it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I call that trouble. Well, yeah, I guess. And you said you were abused, sexually abused when you were younger? Yeah, when I was about six years old, I was sexually molested by my cousin Ugh. for probably um, probably six months mm. or so. I, I really, it's kind of hazy. Um, um, but how, how old was your cousin back then? He, he was like probably like 15. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. So he knew uh, what he was doing. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Have you ever squared things away with him? No, I'm not ready. I, you not know, ready. I'm not ready for that. I don't know. If, I don't know when or if I will be able to. But uh, now he's got. Now he's got two little girls. I'm you know, uh, that Oh, you know what too. though? I, he's going to be doing something. Is yeah. he potentially? I mean, I, I know we always talk about that, and I, I know it's. Uh, I don't want to sound too naive here, and it stands to reason. They often but do. Is a fifty a, a guy who's fifteen. Uh, who, who who touched his uh, little cousin uh, at uh, six. So now uh, you're 21, so that means uh, he is 30. Uh, Heather? Yeah, she oh, Heather uh, had some trouble with the last part of the uh, cousin calling for a date. Uh, he's 30 now, Drew. He has two little girls. Usually. Has is, is he, is he, is, is, is he learned something? I mean, no, can you chalk the, anything mm, up to just insane mm, hormones, mm, experimentation, and uh, pot in the system or something? I, I guess you could, uh, potentially, but uh, the much more likely probability is that something is likely to happen again. Maybe not with his own kids, uh, but oftentimes it is, and oftentimes it's with just one of them. They sort of select the one that's the victim. <laughs> And uh, do they know enough about uh, pedophiles to know that, it, you know, it's like they I mean, have their own... Is like, to me, it's too nice a word. Yeah. Uh, it's abusers. All right. Do victimizer. they know enough about uh, victimizer uh, abusers of children to know what their, like, uh, stalking habits are? I mean, I'm like... I'm sure there are profilers out there. Would a that. guy... Would a guy consider, I, I mean, it's like a, uh, a, a lion uh, may uh, actually attack and kill another lion, but wouldn't attack, uh, the mother lion wouldn't attack its own cubs or something. Right, Although right. Papa lion would eat, would eat one of them. But right. you, you know what I'm saying? Are there certain right, there, rules, I'm sure you there are think? patterns, yeah. I'm sure there are patterns. All right. Uh, well, anyway, the, the deal uh, with Heather, who um, got cut off from us somehow, is uh, this is a major thing. Yeah, and I it mean, needs any, to be looked into any, before you're ever totally right sexually. That's right. And any problems with sexual functioning, of course can harken back to that trauma. Uh, however, not being able to masturbate by the age of 21 is sort of a common thing. W women don't... This is, again, the difference between men and women. M women don't naturally... It's, it's not an obvious thing for them to do. They have to sort of master the feelings attached to that. It's not a mechanical operation the way it is with men. I was at a party tonight and uh, before the show. <laughs> I was talking to this guy, and he had a kid. Uh, like, I don't know, an uh, industry-type guy. And he has... Uh, him and his wife have this, uh, like, two-year-old. And he said... Uh, and, uh, I don't know why I think this is apropos, but maybe I was just trying to work it in. But he said... Um, he was talking to his therapist about uh, how hard to push uh, the kid to be potty trained. Oh yeah, and uh, how much of their uh, you know their own desire that uh, they get rid of the damn pampers and he gets onto the pot. How much of that should you impose on your kid? I know what the usual answer is. And he doesn't want to screw them up sexually. Right. And he right. said, uh, I don't want to push too hard and uh, and have him uh, have him uh, need to get crapped on to come. <laughs> You know, having a dad like that uh, virtually assures that something like that already is going to happen. Uh, right. Any dad that can say that, uh, guess what? Well, the guy's got a good sense of humor. What yeah. he's saying in a nutshell is yeah, he doesn't want to screw the kid up sexually yeah. at the, yeah. the tender age of two or three uh, for his entire yeah, life I've over a few months of uh, diapers. Usually, uh, what often is the rejoinder to that is uh, I've yet to meet a high schooler in diaper. Uh, is your uh, Are your kids uh, doing their thing now? Yeah, no or? problem. No problem? No problem. Really? A little wiping problem sometimes. I have a wiping problem. Come on. 33. Mark, 16. Uh, yes, me and my girlfriend are thinking about having sex, and uh, I want to know how effective withdrawal is or... Uh, if you think 100%. That, if you, yeah, 100% ineffective. If you think that's uh, satisfactory, then you're not ready to have sex yet. Okay. You need to look into this a lot further and prepare yourselves. Have either of you had sex before? Um, no, we haven't. Would she be willing to go on the birth control pill? Uh, probably not. How come? Uh, she thinks it causes cancer. Well, there's no evidence of that. Where did she get that? Is he, the, you, you guys are not ready to have sex yet. She worked for the Mayo Clinic, or you know, you know is she does? just a stupid now, now uh, teenager? Here, now, hear this. You know what does start, uh, cause cancer? Hmm. Beginning sexual activity at a young age. 
that is associated with cervical cancer. How? That's just a fact. <laughs> it is associated with cancer. We don't know. Hold on, hold on. Hey, listen, Sassy. Uh, this is the guy who thought the, the pull-out method was uh, safe, effective. Uh, uh, there wouldn't be this many Catholics uh, on the planet if uh, the pull-out method, method was worth a damn. And, um, there, and your girlfriend thinks the pill causes cancer. The er, the age of initiation of sexual activity, the earlier you begin s sexual activity, and the more partners you have, as a woman, the higher your risk of cervical cancer. Okay? The pill is not associated with cancer at all. Okay. All right? All right? Now, certainly a condom is a reasonable alternative for you, though generally if you're going to use a condom, you should have another barrier in addition if you really want effective birth control. Why not wear a condom, Mark? Uh, I, don't, I mean, I'm sure I would. I was just trying to see if there's anything different other than a condom that would be effective. Pill. Pill is the most effective. But it really, it does not sound like you guys are ready for this, particularly if, if your girlfriend has this sort of, uh, sort of, you know, fantastic thinking about all this. And she needs, she needs to really, be real clear on what it is you guys are doing and prepare for it. It's uh, fantastic thinking is uh, right up there with calling uh, uh, the retarded special. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic thinking. Uh, Mark. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, listen, have use a form of birth control, please. All right. All right. We would not want to get the uh, fantastic uh, twosome together and create a fantastic threesome of thinkers. That's the triumphant of uh, brain power there. All right, Mark. All right. Thank you. All right. <sighs> the pullout method. Here, here's what the pullout method. The pullout method sounds like it would work, except for it, and it would work for anything else except for uh, sex. Well, for two reasons, though. Well, here's one, the one thing. is you don't pull out, and two is that you don't a, pull out. It's a precom. Your and your your ass uh, has uh, a brain of its own when it's uh, in in the male. And so do the sperm. And it, it is still it is going to keep going, and you're going to have to pull it away. Uh, it's like uh, if the owner of a dog tries to pull it out of a fight, it, oftentimes the dog will latch on to the owner uh, just because it is in that mode. And their their sperm released before ejaculation. Yes, and you you can't stop that. As a matter of fact, no one can but me because I have no pre. Absolutely not, Drew. You could uh, uh, I, I uh, six hours of pornography and uh, twenty strippers in a room, uh, an hour worth of an erection, and you could take a uh, dab of uh, toilet paper, put it on the end of my urethra, and it would flutter down to the floor like a feather. Oh. Here's love line before deworming. Here's love line after getting fixed. Here's Loveline chewing out its stitches. Here's Loveline dragging its butt across the garbage. Bad Loveline. Bad Loveline. Loveline has been bad. And we'll be right back. W-E-B-N. And we'll be back in a scant 10 seconds. This is Loveline on Radio Station. We're the G-spot on your radio dial. Oh, yeah, right there. Love Line on 1027. Oh. WEBN, oh. Cincinnati. Right, uh, more Love Line. Uh, Adam Corolla, Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, and uh, you know the rest. And uh, tonight, uh, our guest is the love that the two hosts uh, cherish uh, between them. All right, here we go. Zoe. Uh, Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> 18. Yeah, hi. Hey. All right, now I'm going to hang up on you. Okay. Okay. Oh, for Christ's sake. All right, see ya. <laughs> Jeff, 21. Yes. You see, that crappy teenage sarcasm doesn't work on this show because, okay. Uh, to me, you know what that means? Okay. That means, okay. <laughs> okay, see you later. <laughs> that doesn't mean, uh huh, what's, uh, 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 what's the matter? That just means, okay. All right, Jeff, you're 21. Yes, I am. How you guys doing? Good. Got a question for Dr. Drew. Yes, sir. Um, I'm wondering, the color of my semen is yellow. Has it always been, that, uh, always been that way? Um, yeah. As, for, as far as I can remember, yeah. Okay. That may just be you. It may just be me. Yeah. I is mean, there any way to change that to, like, white? Mm, I mean, a yellow can be indicative of blood, so you worry that there's some little bit of bleeding. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be infection. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's always been that way, it's hard to imagine that it's anything other than just you. Uh, okay. So uh, how about increasing the amount? <laughs> why? Well, you you got a few tall. Uh, you should be calling uh, God and uh, not Drew. <laughs> you well, got some or, tall or, orders here, Jeff. Or a headhunter to try to get him some more ways of preoccupying his time. <laughs> yeah. 
Why? All righty. Well, why? 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 why do you need to produce uh, more? Well, I'm just curious. Just curious. Why? Well, don't you have enough of that crappy yellow uh, semen already? <laughs> no, why? Why would you want to produce more? Um, you watch a lot of porn, don't you, Jeff? No, not actually not. No. But when I, when I know I, I didn't like him. I'm sorry? Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, when I ejaculate, it's, there's uh, just not a lot. Right. So what? Well. How often do you ejaculate? Um, well, a couple times a week. Hmm. But but so what? Why is that a problem? Oh, it's not. I was just wondering if I, if it was anything I could do to increase that. Any way to alter the uh, sperm there, Drew? Yeah. What, what is it you're concerned that a small amount is indicative? Uh, Drew, please, uh, can you just answer the question? Uh, take lots of fluids, uh, high, adequate protein in your diet, uh, delay between ejaculations. Okay. That should increase the volume. Uh, and, and no way to change the color. I mean, he'd have to be tested to make sure there's not blood in there, and there may be something, a slight source of bleeding, but I would think not. Well, if it's been that way his whole life, you're, you're guessing no. Yeah. Probably I'm, not. I'm guessing not. All right, that's just you, uh, Jeff. Uh, right. What color's your poo? Purple? <laughs> no, that's a regular right. a col uh, kaleidoscope? <laughs> a kaleidoscope going on in the toilet there. <laughs> no, not exactly. All right, uh, hey. but uh, the urine's white, right? Uh, no. No. Okay. Clear. All right. It yeah, clear yellow. All right. Uh, hey, Drew. Hey, Adam. Uh, I know uh, if if a guy takes a lot of, I guess it's B vitamins, uh, the the urine turns uh, bright yellow. Yeah. Uh, any vitamin, any supplement, uh, will that change the uh, color of the semen? Uh, again, if there's uh, any urine in the mixed in with the semen, there could change the color. Yeah, but, but I'm saying you. But you're, generally not. No. Okay, because it's a whole different tract. Yeah. Okay. Generally speaking. Yes. Uh, Michelle, thirteen. Um. Hi. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm having problems with my boyfriend, or my ex-boyfriend. Um, I used to, I used to, like, like his cousin, and one time when I was going out with him, I cheated on him with his cousin. What does that mean, cheated? Well, think? like, I just, well, was with him for, like, a, like, most of our relationship, and... Did you get that? Huh? Um, I have... She was with him for most of their him. relationship. Yeah, with, okay, the, my relationship with my ex-boyfriend, I was with his cousin, too. Most of the relationship. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, that ain't, yeah, that ain't <laughs> really cheating uh, on him. That's, uh, hey, hell, guy. you could argue you're cheating on your boyfriend. Where the cousin should be pissed. Yeah, well. Um, well, how long were you with your boyfriend? For about two months. Two months, and yeah. you're with the cousin for like six weeks or something? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Oh, boy. <laughs> you're going to hell. I, I know. Okay, and I dumped him because I like liked his cousin. My holy, uh, you're 13? Like, like, yeah. like, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of gambling on you. Like, oh, God. Like, like. Okay, and I, liked, and I dumped him because I had feelings for his cousin. And now, all of a sudden, he's calling me and harassing me, like, saying, oh, I hate you, and, like, I'm going to kill you or whatever. Uh, the boyfriend. E yeah, my ex-boyfriend. And you, then... You come from... Uh, is there a lot of violence in your family? Like, um, a lot of... Well, my dad used to beat me when yeah. I was... Okay. No. Like, no. So, I lost two bucks. Okay. No, I did. No, <laughs> that was where I was going, Drew, and I always go first. Um, uh, are you having sex with any of these guys? Um, no. Okay, that's okay. good. There we go. Stay, okay. stay with that, please. There. But, but, the, but that abuse you went through when you were growing up, you're, yeah. you're, you're tending to still act out now. Yeah. Um, and he just harasses me and says, mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna kill you and I hate you. And then How do you feel about that? I, don't, I, I feel very uncomfortable because I didn't really do anything to him. Well, yeah, I did, but still. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but still. Uh, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me tell you something. Hold on, Michelle. I use the uh, yeah, but still uh, argument. Everyone listen. Uh, the yeah, but still is the greatest uh, argument ever. It is what you do, uh, it is what you use uh, when you're wrong, but you don't want to just uh, relinquish that and, and, and state that you're wrong. You or have any role of responsibility. It's, yeah, but him. Yeah, but yeah, still, but, it's him. Yeah, but yeah, still. Yeah, but still, he's behaving that way. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, uh, I'm trying to think of a uh, great, because uh, here's like a, a great example. All right, and you know, I won't, I won't even coach you. You just come back with the, I'll tell you why all these Asians are horrible drivers, Drew. They don't know anything about cars. What does an Asian know about cars? The damn champs, they, they don't okay. know anything about They've cars. They've been producing fantastic cars for the last 30 years. Uh, yeah, but still. Right. You see how that works? Right. <laughs> Otherwise, thing. i got to say I'm an idiot. I really uh, got to dust off that yeah, but still more often. <laughs> All right, Michelle. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, but still, yeah. <laughs> you uh, cheated on him. Yeah. All right. So your horrible girlfriend, uh, he's a horrible boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, your, and dad, your dad, your dad, was, dad a was a horrible dad. And you need that chaos. That's that's what you're used to uh, in your f intimate relationships. That's where it f your your comfort is. That's where you feel like you need to go in order to uh, have closeness, have a relationship. That's that's what you know. At least that's one way of thinking about this, I suppose. Um, but you can have to be very, very careful with uh, the kinds of people you choose for your for your boyfriends because they're going to tend to be uh, abusers or at least break down into that eventually. And if they don't do that, you're going to be doing that. Look look what you're doing to the boyfriend. Where's your dad right now? He's at work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was he drinking a lot at the time? Um, I didn't know. I don't know. I was five. I mean, <laughs> I didn't know. That's when he was abusive was when you were five? Yeah. Michelle, those, do you remember what it felt like to be abused like that? Huh? Do I remember? Well, <laughs> it wasn't very uncomfortable. I mean, it was very uncomfortable. Yeah. All right. So you, you, you got to watch yourself, Michelle. You understand? Because mm -hmm. your, your instinct is going to lead you down a bad road. Mm -hmm. it, it won't even be coincidence. <laughs> it's not even just a 50-50 uh, shot. It is like this. Uh, you come to a fork in the road. Uh, one way goes uh, paradise. Uh, the other way goes abuser. You don't even have a 50-50 chance of uh, getting the paradise. you got about a 95% chance of going down the abuser road mm -hmm. because uh, this is what you've come from. Yeah. So uh, take things slow. Uh, give yourself a little time out. Uh, <laughs> If the guy threatens you, you have to document it. You have to uh, alert the proper authorities. And uh, don't argue with him. Just let him uh, get it out of his system and uh, move on. And maybe get away from the cousin, too. Get away from the whole family, too. He isn't so provoked. Oh, Ta yeah. Terry. Yes. Hey, 21, you're on Love Line. Hi, how are you? Good. Listen, my question is this. <laughs> I'm laughing because my husband's running in there. Um, I'm on my second marriage. And um, my first marriage, my ex-husband uh, had many affairs. Mm. Did you know about them when they were going on? I'm sorry? Did you know about them when they were in process, in progress? Oh, yeah. I knew about them. How long were you married for? Oh, let's see. I was probably married, um, well, in total, I was married for about over a year. But we were separate. We were only together for five months. And then we separated, and he went and gave me my divorce. How old were you when you when you got married? Eighteen. Pretty and young. how long had you known each other before that? I dated him through high school, so about two and a half years. Was he cheating that whole way through? No, uh, -uh not, wasn't or until not, you, at least not that I knew of. It wasn't really until you got married. Right. Okay. So what's your question? Oh, my question is, I'm married to this wonderful guy, and he is uh, he's the best thing. But I have these I have this insecurity. Hmm. I don't. I know uh, let me guess. in my heart he's not cheating on me, but right. yeah, I, I, I still have this, I don't know, doubt. And I just well, wonder, well, let me guess, you're kind of angry with him when, when you even have the slightest uh, notion that perhaps he's been cheating. Yeah. And get real aggressive sometimes. No, no. Not real aggressive. Husband's in the other room going, uh, hmm. <laughs> Husband's in the other room uh, with like an ice pack on the back of his neck on the uh, print of a Louisville slugger. Uh, no. <laughs> right at the hairline there. No, uh, all right. Well, Terry. Yes. Uh, what's going on with you? What's your what, past yeah, like? What, what happened? Why would you select a guy like that first guy? What did I... The yep. Why, why would that be an adequate husband for you? An abuser like that? My first husband? Yep. He wasn't. That's yeah, why I yeah, left him. Yeah, but why would you why would you have <laughs> selected him in the first place? Well, it was it wasn't like that. And it wasn't until mm -hmm. after we got married that everything just went downhill. Mm -hmm. And um I mean when we were dating everything was fine. Right. Let me guess. Leave uh, it to, leave then it he to had a ever. brain transplant at <laughs> nineteen and a half. Right, Is right. that what happened, Terry? Did Wait. he have some sort of uh, uh like a doctor uh, Jekyll get in there and trade brains with him? Terry, no. let me guess. Leave it to Beaver family, right? Him? For, for you. Yeah, I had a very, I, came, I came from a very good family. Very yes, good, very okay, good. true. True, if I had a buck, it'd be yours. All right, Terry, you're in a ton of denial. Oh, I am? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. I, I, here's the uh, litmus test for those who are in a ton of denial. Uh, I say, uh, you're in a ton of denial. And they go, uh, I am? <laughs> No, huh? <laughs> huh? It's uh, it's make fun of the listeners' night here on Love Line. No, but Terry, let's get serious for a second. The fact is, we both were picking up on how defensive you were 
about discussing anything related to your past. Immediately, you're terribly defensive about that, which suggests, I mean, there, there are reasons that people select the people they select to be in their relationships with. Mm -hmm. And the guy who Adam uh, facetiously described as having had a brain transplant didn't, obviously. He was the same a-hole he was before you married him. But you don't see that. You, you, for some reason, you go towards people who are, let's say, probably narcissistic or sociopathic, something manipulative or, or self very less concerned about your feelings and concerned about their own feelings. Let's put it that way. Is that, is that, is that accurate? Um, somewhat. You get yeah. points for not being defensive, remember. Right, right. We'll be happy to just have a discussion with you, but not a defensive one. Uh, and, and so, you know, something about your family system was not so leave it to beaverish. Some, some, you know, some, oftentimes families are what are called enmeshed, where people are sort of extensions of one another and aren't good boundaries. And, you know, everybody is responsible for everybody else's feelings rather than being individuals who are of their own worth and they're able to modulate their own emotional worlds. They're dependent on each other and they're in, in, in interactive with one another in ways that are not healthy. And that's the kind of things that, that uh, result in the kinds of relationship you've chosen. And now this guy you're with may be too good. He may be a good guy. Uh -huh. But it's not comfortable enough. It's got to be, it's got, you've got to, you've got to inject something in there to either, to either create some drama or to destroy this. Yes. Uh, very insightful, Drew. All right. So, uh, don't focus on the guy. You know it's not him. You know it's you. And uh, stop being so defensive. And uh, stop with the leave it to Beaver uh, family. Right. Uh, be realistic. Realize that uh, maybe dad and mom had a few faults. Uh, maybe you picked up a thing or two from them. And uh, maybe you need to look into it now. All right. Sam, 15. Yeah. Um, I take Zoloft. Mm -hmm. And I was one. I haven't taken it for the last month. Well, let's let's describe what that is to people. That's a that's a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. It's a common medicine, and uh, it's usually taken at bedtime. Causes some sedation. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what, what's a ser uh, what's a serotonin uh, raises, reuptake ra ra inhibitor? Raises the serotonin levels in the brain that improve your mood. Antidepressant. All right. Thanks for sorry, clarifying sorry. that. Sorry. I thank you for for stopping me, <laughs> Sam. Okay, and I haven't taken it because I'm not sure. Do you know how it reacts with um, LSD? And not good. Opium? Uh, if you're doing those two things, you need more than just Zoloft. Uh, and LSD at your age is a great way to cause destruction of the centers that maintain your mood. You're, you're going to need antidepressant medicine possibly the rest of your life. Uh, it, it is exceedingly important that you talk to your doctors about what it is you're doing. Okay. Are you, are you taking LSD? Nobody can help you. Hold on. I don't know if she's doing it yet. I've only done it twice. All right. Listen, goofball. Nobody can help no you. No experimenting with your brain at 15. You're already on one drug. I it mean, doesn't work, though. I know, but listen. Well, it doesn't uh, work because you haven't told people who are taking care of you the full truth. Well, it wasn't. I've been taking it for about a year. Sam, you got to tell them everything. Just tell them what you're contemplating. You can, you, it's a, you, know, you can go do what you're going to do. You know, nobody can stop you, but you need to at least be honest with the people who are taking care of you because they can't do it without information, without the full story. Okay? Okay. These are bad things. These oh, are not I've got good. one other question. Yeah. It, it, it's bad thinking to think that somehow this is going to make you better because it, it, it may make you feel better transiently. I, I, it can. I mean, these medicines, that's why people do drugs because they feel better for a short period of time. But the long-term consequences, uh, believe me, do not do not compensate for those short-term gains. What, what's your other question? Well, it was kind of that, um, what are the long-term effects of opium? Um, it depends how long you do it and how much you do, but the uh, strange thing about uh, the opiates is that they leave the brain relatively intact, as compared at least with other drugs of addiction. Yeah, but they're so addicting. They're profoundly addicting. It's a profound form of addiction that it causes, and it's probably the most the most serious form of addiction with oh. the highest rates of relapse. Now there's people, they sell their uh, daughters into yeah. prostitution and yeah. stuff to yeah, get yeah. their uh, yeah. fix. Yeah, it, it really is a terrible form of addiction, but in terms of what it does to the brain, it can uh, disturb the mood center somewhat, and it can uh, upset you permanently your, your ability to screen out discomfort and pain, but again, as compared to most drugs of addiction, it leaves the brain relatively All right, intact. but Sam, mm -hmm. I, uh, my take on this stuff is uh, when you're on an antidepressant or medication or something, you forfeit your right to experiment with uh, hallucinogenic drugs. Well, that's why I stopped taking it. Good. <laughs> well, what'd you stop taking? Zoloft. Oh, okay. Listen. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they need a new argument. Oh, okay. I hate to kick someone when they're down, but Sam, please, uh, you're going to need your brain later on. 
Well, I'm not planning on um, taking LSD again. Just, Good. Yeah, don't Good. don't monkey with that opium, stuff thing about right opium now. Is if, if, particularly if you are from certain ethnic uh, pattern, background, or if you have a family history of alcoholism, the, the opium can become very quickly addicting. Christine, uh, what, like Asian? The Indian? You know what? Uh, you know who has... <laughs> hey. No, you know, as, uh, there's, oh, yes, there are certain sort of... Uh, but I, I have experienced a lot of uh, opium and amphetamine addiction in ethnic Jews. Oh, really? Tremendous. Sure. Uh, otherwise, it's alcoholism background. That's uh, typically what I see. Yeah. Well, you got to be high to spin that dreidel. Uh, is that what you're talking about, Drew? To enjoy it. Uh, to enjoy spinning of the dreidel. This is uh, the worth, uh, most worthless toy in the world. Christine. Hey, what's up? Hey, you're 19. Uh-huh. Um, I basically have a, a problem with a manic depressive bipolar with psychotic tendencies. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, I went out with him earlier in the year for um, about two months, and he ended up just, it, he, was, he was a lot to handle, and we were basically like really good friends. He ended up dropping out of school, and I didn't hear from him for a while. Let me, I'm going to ask a funny question. I'm having my, my clear audio experience here. So you use Kenny Kingston's term. <laughs> what, what do you plan to do for a career, Christine? Um, diplomacy or international relations okay. or something. Okay, all right, then forget it. Because I, I, I was taking the tact of why, why you would want to take on a project like this, fellow. Uh, how do you, if, if nursing were something you intended to go into any time in your life. That, that, oh, definitely not. <laughs> okay. right. How do you get into diplomacy? Um, I just love traveling and languages and stuff like that. I basically like real, um, have a planned life, like I know what I want to do. and. Okay. You know, great. So I'm pretty self-motivated, but um, he ended up stepping out of my life for a while, and I, I kind of got over it. And he hurt me like by breaking it up and stuff. But uh, recently, he wrote me this letter that was like, you know, I'm I'm sane now. Like I've gone through the hospital. I'm better. Like I really miss you. I really love you. You know, could uh, be true. I want you back. Da da da. That could be true. But it just seems so. It just seems so fake. Like it's. You know, could, uh, seven months uh, later. Well, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what to do about this, it. I'm going to give you some, oh, I don't know if I'm giving you good advice or not. But I mean, uh, I, I still sort of have feelings. But if it. somebody has pure affective disorder, all right, a bipolar illness, just the moods are out of, out of whack, but doesn't have any significant personality disorder, um, then indeed correcting the mood disturbance may be the solution to the problem. And it may have been an expression of his mood disorder. Uh, whether or not that's the case in this situation, I can't say. And you're, you're certain your skepticism is warranted and be very careful. It certainly would still be a project if you get back involved. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, it, I expect it, Christine. It's, it's I, a tall order. I, I just got the sense from Christine she's one of these eating disorder people. You want to ask her if she ever had anything like that? Christine. Yeah. Did you ever have any disorder or anything like that, Christine, yourself? No, not at okay. all. All right. Then, okay. then it sounds like you're, you're so in control of your life. I, I don't know. It, you're all for two, Drew. You're right. I'm completely you're, off. You're wrong. No, I'm completely wrong. You're wrong so. for um, not only this week, but next week. Okay. I'll shut up. Okay. But, Christine, if, uh, you know, you, you seem to be so controlled in so many areas of your life. That, that's what I'm sort of I picking don't know. up. Drew, on. you're you're projecting. Uh, she wants to be a diplomat uh, so she can well, travel no, but, and but, but uh, I'm getting is all this, she's have so, sex with foreigners. But she's all contained and controlled. Everything my life is planned uh, out. And then this, guy, this, will, too. And then this like one guy is, is sort of screwing everything up and uh, it may be an expression of her... No, I forget. All right, Mr. Instinct. Uh, Kristen, 16. Uh, yes, I wanted to know that... Um, it, can a girl get pregnant from swallowing semen? Yes, but the baby comes out of her ass. Uh, oh. If you have to ask that question, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mike? Uh, and put that on a put that on a card, perhaps. Uh, Chris, hinging your mics like a, a retarded guy sitting there. You never know what he's gonna, what's going to strike his fancy. And then he gets on to <laughs> something. <laughs> he just laughs his ass off for no good reason. Meanwhile, I'm sp uh, spewing out. Uh, I'm making radio history here with one uh, brilliant uh, one-liner after the next. He oh, sits yeah. there with a puss on, and then uh, Drew comes out with some inane comment, and he's rolling on the floor. Kristen. Yeah. Do they uh, offer a, a health class at your high school? Yeah. Have you enrolled in it? No. No. All right, that's good. Uh, why? Uh, why don't you know this at sixteen? I just never learned it, really. You never learned it. But what would you think? I would suspect not. Yeah. All, All right. right. And what about anal sex? I've never done it. Right. Uh, <laughs> 
It is a uh, meeting of the minds uh, here on Love Line this evening. And uh, this corner, uh, Socrates uh, over here is uh, Plato. Uh, Gertrude Stein, uh, Plato, uh, Plato, and uh, Kristen. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, what uh, I'm asking, though, I know you've never engaged in this deviant behavior, but um, uh, it has been my uh, long-standing belief that a woman could become impregnated uh, through the rear end. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? Kristen? Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, if you dried yourself with a towel uh, that uh, your brother had just uh, used to mop his belly off with? Uh, would you uh, say there would be a good chance of you getting pregnant? No. No. Uh-huh. So uh, you, do, you do draw the line somewhere. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Kristen, uh, get that health class uh, uh, on your next enrollment card, yes. would you? Semen has to get into the vagina. Okay. Yeah. And okay. there's no uh, there's no backdoor route to the vagina. Well, uh, I mean, things uh, can, you know, there's always been concern that things leak and move around. Yeah, but the, 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 uh, the vagina is like the bat cave. Uh, they got that one secret entrance, and that's it. Well, uh, mm. Oh, well, wait a minute. It's not, because the bat cave, you can go up into the mansion and slide down the pole. Right. What would the vagina be like? Uh, <laughs> Stop. All right. I'll tell you what, uh, what the vagina is like when we come back. Ernie, the world's fastest drummer for Loveline. Hi. When I'm not drumming, up a storm. <laughs> what was the rest of it? Loveline will be right back. If it's not, sue me or something. WEBN. Love Line. W E B N. Hi, this is Jonathan. And this is David from Corn, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Huh? Very long. Very long? Ah, all right. Uh, hey, it's Love Line. That was, uh, that was Corn. All right, uh, phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. And uh, it's back to the phones. So we shall go with uh, Monica, 20. Monica? Hello? Go right ahead. Um, I, this is a... Turn your radio off, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, no, 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 let's get her... Let her let, uh, go ahead. I have to set an example, Dora. Go ahead. Is this a uh, call for Dr. Drew? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay, I have a problem. My boyfriend, he's 20, and supposedly two years ago, he said that his penis just ripped. And, you... like, he's... Lately, he tested for STDs and HIV, and he came out clean. So I don't know what's wrong with him. Is it like a disease or something? You mean that causes the ripping? Because it's tilting. No, no. That, he Something happened mechanically. Uh, that uh, was he the, leaning while his penis was tilted? Because... And so when when no. the, when the when the rip occurs, there often needs to be a surgery or there can be scarring on that side and that pulls the penis in that direction. Okay. Does he have? Does he get erections normally? Yeah, he gets them, but it's tilted, and he wasn't gonna tell me. I barely found out like a month ago. Do they hurt when he has the erections? No. Okay. Then, like, then, then he's we, lucky. He's lucky. Then things are still working. He doesn't have pain. They, there's a little bit of a curve. No, but, that's... but like we like we never do nothing like. Because he's embarrassed. No, he's not embarrassed. But we tried it once, and it just died out. It but, went down. It's like yeah. So it doesn't work as well as it used to? No. Okay. Uh, well, wait for a minute. For other what? things, yeah. For other things, it works fine. What well, do you mean I, for other things? Opening cans and stuff. <laughs> uh, well, what? Like uh, boring out cylinder heads or <laughs> driving 16 penny nails? Uh, what, what other stuff does the penis work well for? Or like for other things, like for play, everything's fine. Uh -huh. When we're about to do it, it just dies out. Uh, how many times have you guys... How many times have you uh, guys done it? None. Oh, you haven't done it? None. No. How many times have you tried? Like four. Uh, but you don't try anymore. Do you talk? Like he's embarrassed. He says, All right. uh, I, I, I have, I have to go to a doctor. Monica, wait, 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 wait. Well, hold on, hold on, Drew. He's never gone to a doctor? Drew? No, he's never gone. Oh, okay. for Christ's sake. Right. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, uh, I want to I, I, I start taping the show and replaying it. Uh, a minute ago, you said... Uh, He's not uh, trying anymore because he's embarrassed? No. No. It's because uh, his penis doesn't work. And one time we tried and it didn't work. And now uh, we're not even trying because he's embarrassed. 
Didn't Drew just ask you, uh, did he stop trying because he was embarrassed? Oh, I didn't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> no, you heard him because you said no, no. Uh, Drew, didn't you just ask her yeah, that? Like, yeah. It's because we haven't tried. Like The last time we tried was uh, Friday. All right, look. And now he's... Uh, Monica, it's, it's outlandish that he hasn't seen a doctor yet. It's just horrible. I mean, what kind he, of doctor is he? A urologist. He oh. sees a urologist, okay? Hey, 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 hey. No, right. no. Refrain, restrain yourself. A, a urologist, okay? Urologist. A urologist. And he really needs to see the urologist. He may have lifelong problems with erectile function, with, with getting but, 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 but wait a minute, Drew. She says the erection works perfectly during the foreplay. It doesn't work the way it used to, though, he said. That this it, is what do you mean new... used to? They've never made love. No, but he, he, he sees this as a new mechanical problem, and indeed it probably is. Uh, I mean, wait a minute. I, I, I'm, I'm going to cut uh, to the chase here. Monica, <laughs> listen carefully. Wait, uh, please. If he's had a rip, he's never seen a doctor, he needs to see a doctor. Okay, okay. go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, rider that you've tacked on to the amendment, Drew. Here's what's going on, and uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. All right, but make sure I'm wrong before you tell me. Okay. Uh, he has had difficulty with the actual uh, trying to have sex part. Mm -hmm. But his erection works real well during uh, the touching and the uh, licking and the grabbing and the groping and all the foreplay stuff, right? Yes. Now, when you question him on uh, why doesn't it work uh, during the sex part, he said, well, I had an accident where something tore. Well, he doesn't even know how it happened. He supposedly he just woke up in, in one day three years ago and it was just ripped. Uh, right, but it works fine f while you guys are just playing around, right? Right? Yeah, because he comes and everything. All right. It works fine. Okay. This is a guy who has stage fright, Drew. The penis is working because uh, he's having, a, he's ejaculating, uh, they're having all sorts of foreplay. Perhaps. He, his erection works perfectly during the foreplay, right, Monica? Uh-huh. But we can't make that assumption because something. Sure we I, can. I don't believe that he woke up with this. But I've seen it. It is like tilting. Uh, and he's got some scarring, and he he may need. It may be a Peyronie type syndrome, but it may need treatment. He needs to be seen. No I'm looking what. at this as a blessing, Drew. Uh, I don't think you should send him to. A, don't send him to a urologist. Send him like ear, nose, and throat it guy. Blows cover. Yeah. So to speak. Well, I'm just saying. Let's see if we can stretch out the fornication for another eight to ten years. Oh, for them. Oh yeah. Uh, good point. Monica, what kind of uh, birth control are you uh, planning on using? Well, I'm not on nothing right now. No, okay. How about yeah. him? My first one. She's 20. Uh-huh. But you... for me, he's going to be my first. Oh, yes. All right. But you don't have any birth control, do you? No. You, you realize you could easily become pregnant. I know, but we've never done it. Yeah, yeah but, but when you do do it, uh, then then that's where the pregnancy happens. I know. I'm going to go get on the pill. Okay, well, do the, you do oh. that before you, you have sex. And if, indeed, you have sex... Get the morning after pill. The next day, go get a pill. There's a way you can take oh, the birth control true. pill. Uh, Where do you get that at? Uh, any doctor can give it to you. But more importantly, get on the pill before you have sex because it works a lot better that way, okay? Okay. All right, Monica. Monica. Just uh, for my dying and parting words here. Okay. Please uh, promise me that... Uh, do not count on his penis not working. It will work one of these times and you will become pregnant. You have a much. No, 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 you, no, no, listen no, to me. Like, listen to me. Like, uh, listen to me. Okay. You have a much higher chance than average people of becoming pregnant. I can hear it in your voice. I understand. You have about a 99% chance of becoming pregnant. Please make sure that you use some birth control. Understand that. And All right, please. Uh, All right. And if you screw up, everybody, morning after pill, it's available. Very inexpensive. Uh, Only three days. I, I, I've, I've done uh, exhausting uh, st statistical work, and I've come up with a you conclusion. Do, uh, my, me and my team, and I was involved with this uh, research. And, and the people that say, uh, when, uh, when they reply to, do you use birth control, say, uh, I don't use nothing, I have a much, much higher degree of becoming impregnated the first time around. Uh, it's uh, I can I can show you the data, true. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Chrissy, eighteen. Hi. Hey. I actually have two questions. Please. 
The first one's for the doctor. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to know if, I guess it was last month, I started my period earlier than I was supposed to. Mm-hmm. And so um, I, I have birth control pills that I usually take. Mm-hmm. And I took about, I guess it was three or four, just to see if it could stop my period. Uh, wait, you're kind of confusing me here. You're on the pill normally? Uh-huh. Are you, are you, you using them in a sort of dam-like uh, action, or are you taking them orally? Orally. Oh, okay. You, you were using them all last month, Uh huh. and you started bleeding early. Well, actually, no, I wasn't using them when I started my period. I had take, I had stopped for a month. You missed, for, you skip, skipped one month. Uh-huh. Yeah, you, you go off the pill, your periods are going to be all kind of weird for a while. Okay. Okay, so that's why that happened. Okay. And then you tried to go back on the pill? Yeah, to stop my period altogether. Tried to double you up. Took four pills yeah. in, you took four pills in one day? Uh-huh. Did you throw up? Mm-mm. No. I didn't actually feel any different. <laughs> Which pill are you taking? Uh, orthocept. And the 28 day or the, uh, the 21 day? 28. And did you start with the, the funny colored ones or the, the, the three-week one? Um, the funny colored ones. Okay, those are, those are probably the sugar pills anyway. Oh, well, I, no, I start with the ones that are, like... At the top. Th- yeah. At the top. All right. Um, well, make sure you finish the packet. It's going to really screw your period up if you stop uh, now. Finish the packet. I don't want to state the obvious here, Chrissy, but don't eat the actual packet. You understand? Uh, I, it's just I actually, uh, plastic. I actually have a theoretic concern with what you did in that the orthocept is one birth control pill that has been associated with an increased risk of blood clots. Really? In the legs, yeah. And so uh, having four of them in one day, I mean, if you get any swelling in your legs at all, uh, it's excruciatingly important that you see a doctor immediately, okay? Okay. But it, in all probability, you've done nothing. You can usually, usually you'll make yourself sick with that. You get yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel anything. Yeah, fine. Uh, and uh, finish out the packet, and uh, that'll be that. Okay. okay. And then don't go off and on the pill like that. Okay. If you're going to go off, go off for six months. Okay. Um, otherwise, stay on it. Okay, thank right. you. Bye-bye. Didn't she have another, hey, another question? question, Chrissy? Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. This is for you, Adam. Who yeah, cares? Yeah, an Adam question. Yeah. Oh. Um, my boyfriend and I get along really well, mm-hmm. and we never fight, and we have sex regularly. Um, but sometimes, like, I will want to have sex more than he does, and I don't know how to get him to, like, kind of be on the same groove that I am. Most of the time, you want to have sex more than he does. Yeah. Yeah. I've upgraded that from sometimes. And what is he good for a week? Um, we usually do it, like, every day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what would you like? Like twice a day. Oh, really? Uh, how many penises does he have? <laughs> one. Okay. Uh, give the guy a break then. I really? thought maybe he was uh, one of the uh, multi-penis holders, and uh, oh. in which case that would have been fine. You simply rotate the fresh penis around while the other one takes a breather. But uh, <laughs> once a day is uh, quite enough. That's, uh, that's uh, seven days a week, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh... I, I, normally, I would say, um, you know, if the one partner wants it more than the other partner, then you reach some sort of uh, compromise. But all bets are off if it's every day. Well, what if it's like sometimes maybe it's less? Because so, it doesn't seem like we do it seven times a week. He's, does, does he not fulfill you the one time a day? No, he, does, he does. He does. Mm-hmm. You're very defensive about that. <laughs> it, how long it, does he, does he, um, does the gun go off? Uh, Mm-mm. No, quickly? usually if he can go for... Like, the average is probably about a half an hour to 45 minutes. All right. How do you have time for that? Uh, there, uh, there are women uh, who are just uh, put the heel of their uh, pump right through the radio listening to you. Why? Because uh, most women uh, would love to have a guy who's uh, good for half hour, 45 minutes every day. It sounds like enough. You can uh, try to... How old is he? He's going to be 19. All right. You can uh, see if you can entice him into more, but uh, really, by law, he's not obligated uh, to <laughs> have sex with you uh, more than once a day. Love nature. But Okay, but my actual question is how do I get him to want to do it more than once a day? Uh, probably not biologically likely. Okay. Yeah, you're 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 not gonna. Uh, all I would say is you can try to tease out the one time you do have it and see if you can turn that and and take up more of the day during during that. Uh, don't you have a job, Chrissy? Yes. What do you do? I'm a waitress. All right. Uh, you need to put in more hours. Okay. You understand? Okay. Okay.
Elvis singer. Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. WEBN. Hi, this is Nancy Sinatra, and you're listening to Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Oh, uh, what pulled a, out some old ones. Here. Really, uh, not that old. I mean, but we haven't heard these in a while. He's saying Nancy, uh, Nancy no, Sinatra's I mean, old. Uh, he Polly and Nancy Sinatra. We haven't heard these in a while. And uh, Nancy delivering one of the more professional Loveline uh, breakers we've Sounding, had. We've yeah. had. She yeah. sounded like a total pro there. Yeah. She was lucid. Uh, she was very She was nice. clear, articulate. I wish she, she was here with her daughter. We, you were here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I remember her being nice. I don't, that's uh, about all I remember, though. Bobby, 14. That's all I said. You were uh, nice. Yeah. All right, Drew. Don't get defensive because of your family now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a friend, and she um, wrote a message in my yearbook, and... Um, I think she likes me, but I don't want to mess up the friendship. Mm -hmm. I confronted her with this. Um, you did confront her or you want to? I want to. I want to ask her if she likes me. Because oh. you like her? Yeah, yes. I like her. Of she, course you do. Is she a close friend? Not really. What was the message in the yearbook? Um, it was... Do you have the yearbook there? Yeah. All right, open it up. It says, what's up, baby? I'm going to miss our talks after school. I hope I can see you real soon. Of always, Jessica. Phone number? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. Well, wait a minute now. Uh uh, I never really did get involved with the yearbook uh, thing because, as I was telling uh, Drew, uh, I, I was telling you during the break when we were uh, lamenting over our uh, tortured uh, teen years, uh, not only did I never take a school picture, but I never bought a yearbook. Uh. I don't own any yearbooks because uh, I came from the kind of family where it was like uh, 12 bucks uh, for a yearbook was... Eh. And I, I, I got to the point where I just never asked after a certain point, and they never, they never brought it up, and so I never, I consequently, I do not own a yearbook from either high school or junior high. But uh, I, I, so I never really got involved. That between that, my uh, heinous uh, spelling and uh, mm -hmm. being, uh, being uh, uh, realistically uh, pretty uh, illiterate. I did not get involved with that whole yearbook thing where they signed and they right. wrote and back and the forth. But I know uh, a lot of guys took these things home, uh, read them uh, feverishly, and tried to decipher hidden messages uh, from women who they were uh, too cowardly to speak to during the school year. It's right. kind of ironic. You spend the entire year with somebody. Uh, you, don't, you don't make your move. Uh, but I'll tell you, uh, come July, uh, <laughs> you're ready to go. Because now you have this clue. And everybody's got like the Rosetta Stone out to try to interpret these things, right? right. right. Nobody st says it straight out. Well, this is the season, so uh, please call us. You have uh, two people who are experts in uh, what teens are thinking, and we will, we will uh, meticulously go over this material, decipher it, and get back to you. Much like a guy uh, who works for the FBI <laughs> who anal analyzes handwriting or something like that. All right, so Bobby, uh, it sounded pretty casual, though she did put the phone number in there. But don't you already have her phone number? No. Nah. He's I, 14. 14 but, but, is pretty wait aggressive. Wait, wait, hold on a second. You, you said uh, that you, you didn't want to ruin a friendship. Mm -hmm. They weren't that close, he also said. Well, so you're not worried about ruining any friendship. You're worried about getting shot down. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Well, please. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call, like, everybody in my yearbook, and I, I want to keep up with everybody. You do? Good. That's great. keep up with her, too. That's great. But it sounds, it, to me, that sounds a little more aggressive, a little more assertive. All right, give, it, give us the reading one more time, Bobby, please. All right. All right. Um, Hang on a second. Hold on. Let's, right. We can get some, uh, you know, theme music. <laughs> All right, Bobby, go ahead. Um... What's up, baby? I'm gonna miss our talks after school. I hope to see you real soon. Love always, Jessica. Ah, summer place. Don't you get that fuel? That fuel? I, I, I do, but I'm not thoroughly convinced. Just didn't say please call me. It's not a home run, but 14. it's like a, it's She's like 14. a solid double. She's 14. Yeah, yeah. Bobby? Yeah. Does she have a boyfriend? Um, no. Are you going to see her next semester? Um, I don't think so. Why not? Um, because I'm not going back to the school. And w she is? Um, she might be. I'm not sure. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What's, uh, 
What do you mean? Why aren't you going back to that school? Um, because I want I want to go to another school. Okay. All right. Then call her. You got nothing to lose. Yeah, absolutely. But well, listen, she told you she, she t- she's basically said call me. She left her phone. She's up saying there. call me. And no I mean, one's certain. Or not, terms. Whether or not you can have a relationship, that's a whole other thing. But, but listen, certainly she wants you to call her, Bobby. Yeah. Don't dilly dally any more than you already have. Okay. Call her and ask her out. Don't hedge. Don't say, uh, hey, uh, me and some friends are going over to do this, and I got an extra one of these, and maybe you can join all of us. Uh, don't dilly dally. Ask her out. It's all right. She's uh, she's a young lady. She'll at least be flattered. You understand? Mm-hmm. All right, Bobby, good luck. Wait a minute. What is her name, Bobby? Uh, who? Bobby. What is her name? Oh, Jessica. Okay. All right, you ready? We'll do a quick mock phone call. You ready? Yeah. All right. I'll be uh, Jessica. Uh, Hello. I'm sorry. Hello? Well, can I speak to Jessica? Uh, hold on. Uh, hello, this is Jessica. Hey, what's up? Hey, bo- hey, Bobby. Yeah, you call. Great. What's happening? Oh, nothing much. I just wanted to know if you um, you wanted to come somewhere with me. Wait, what do you mean? I don't know. Just like get together. A get together over the summer. Yeah, like uh, and do what? I don't know. All right, have a plan. Would you, Bobby? <laughs> Please, <laughs> a clear one. <laughs> well, that's good. But here's here's the deal. Don't get into too much conversation before you ask her out. It's all going to be... He did He was good. Yeah. I mean, he went right into it. You, you're a winner, Bobby. Call her tomorrow. Ask right. her right out. She expects it. Okay. All right. All right. All right, Bobby. Why not too much conversation for her? You talk yourself out of it? No, here's what happens. Uh, you get into too much pre-conversation to uh, the uh, before uh, the actual objective of the call, and then it uh, you're scared to ask because it seems like all the pre-stuff was just what it was. Right. Like you were stalling right, or right, something. Right, right. Like the scene in the uh, summer 42 when the guy wanted to buy the condom. Right, right, right. And he got like a six-pack of soda, right, and he right. got some uh, hard candy, and he kept buying things uh, before he actually was going to ask the guy behind the counter to give him a condom. Right, big pans and stuff. Right, right. You start digging a grave. Uh, Brian, 21. Yeah, um, I have a question about vasectomies. Um, I'm married. I've been married seven months. I have a three-year-old daughter with another girl. Mm. My wife has a two-year-old daughter from another guy, mm. and we have a three-month-old together. Mm. Yep, yeah, that's it. Did you really need the three-month-old? It was. It's the only one he has with his wife. Yeah. <laughs> really, I can understand that. So, yeah, but the guy's twenty-one. Yeah, but yeah, it's time for a vasectomy. What do you think? Yeah, he's on your list, isn't he? Would you like a vasectomy, Brian? Well, I, I'm not. I don't mind getting one, but I just want to know what is there going to be any changes? Nope. Here, engineer Mike's had one. Mike, help. Uh, and, and you, won't, you won't notice a thing. Okay, Brian. Okay. You have a little battle scar. That's it. And what hap- Is there anything you could do, like, because uh, my wife's only 18. Uh-huh. And what happens in five years when she says, well, you know, What's I'd up? really like to have a baby now. Uh, then that's when the vasectomy is really doing its job. Yeah, that's what it's there for, buddy. Because uh, you still have the three kids. Yeah. The problem is is uh, the state has taken away two of them. I could barely take care of three kids. I don't know how anybody can take care of more than three kids. I, I just mean, don't It's know. not easy. What do you do for a living, Brian? I, I run heavy equipment. All right. And uh, your wife, uh, you, you make enough money? Uh, right now I am. I'm definitely going to need more. I can't wait for her to go back to work so we can afford something. But cool. uh, All right. No more kids. Uh, uh, we get him on your list for value. All right. Uh, we'll put you on hold, Brian. All right. All right. Uh, ladies. Uh, uh-oh. It's, uh, uh, the Victoria's uh, Secret's catalog. It's a, it's a meeting in. of the Avon committee over there. Uh, uh, Victoria's like, Secret's uh, catalog came in. We won't see them. Oh, the catalog come in? Yeah, yeah. Was a, a pottery barn? Uh, what is it this Victoria time? Secret. Is it Vic- Victoria's Secret? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, everyone's got a puss on over there. <laughs> All right. Ladies, uh, put uh, Brian, uh, I'm going to put him on hold. Uh, put him on the uh, candidate for the uh, vasectomy list. Okay, he operates heavy equipment. He's got uh, three kids in the house, uh, all from a different family. <laughs> all right, Brian. 
Listen, take care of those kids, would you? All right. Please. Well, I couldn't imagine being 21, having an 18-year-old wife and three kids. No, I, I, no. I couldn't. Uh, I, That's I can't off to fathom. Him for, for uh, you know, uh, working hard on it. Uh, the hat is not completely off yet. Uh, well, uh, I will completely remove the hat five years from now, perhaps, uh, if the kids are all adjusted and still with it. All of my most sensitive areas were inflamed. Really? Loveline will be right back to deal with inflamed sensitive areas. WEBN. On WEBN. All right, we, we got to hurry up because I got to finish my story with Drew. All right, <laughs> All right so uh, tomorrow more of the same, only better. Thank the ladies. Promise you that. Yes, I want to thank the uh, beautiful Sherry, the lovely Lisa, and the one and only uh, angular one, uh, producer Ann, for putting her feminine stink on the show. Also, the one at Wonder, the uh, unsung hero of the, uh, what show is this? The Love Line. Yes, he does a wonderful job. So, until next time, this is Adam Corolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed herein are certainly opinions, that's for sure. If you'd like a written transcript of today's program, you probably should have written it down yourself. And if you did, we'd like a copy. Loveline producer Ann Wilkins. This broadcast was copyright 1997 Westwood One Entertainment. This music is MXPX on Tooth and Nail Records. Sit, Obo. Obo, stop dragging your butt across the carpet. Uh-huh.